All right, I wanted to do a quick little video on a very cool little side plate and shelf plate from Dan Decker. He goes by Triple D on the forums. Dan's Archery. Dan is a great guy first and foremost, and if you've not talked to him, you should. He's just a really nice guy. Dan has a knack of really putting out some awesome little, I guess they're polymer, they're some type of plastic, molded shelf plates that give you a radius. He also has um, side plates. Now, I'm gonna get into more detail on that. Dan just sent me a package. Here's one that was made originally for a Titan riser, and I have a piece of seal skin on it. I was using it on my Tempest, my 19 inch Tempest, but it was not the perfect configuration. Dan likes perfect stuff, so Dan has just sent me a little package. Um, we'll open it real quick. Sharp knife. In the package, we have two side plate and shelf plate kits. One is going to uh, my buddy Sid over in Scotland for them to take a look at and play with. This one's mine. Now, I'm gonna zoom the camera in and, and show what this stuff is and what comes in the package. Hold on for a second. Okay, um, <clears throat> again, Dan Decker. This was the side plate from the Titan riser that I had. Um, I still have them, I have three of them. You can see, it's a very cool little polymer molded shelf plate. It's sculpted on the inside to give you a lot of feather clearance. You can see I had the seal skin on here. Super slick, really worked out well. The hump is a little far forward to line up with the adjustable side plate on the Tempest. So Dan has molded a new one right here. that has moved the hump back a bit, which we should be able to get on there and it'll be perfectly lined up with the adjustable side plate. There are two side plate holes. I'm speaking about the rear one. Now I love to cover stuff in steel skin, but Dan has done such a nice job with this soft sided Velcro, I'll probably leave it as it is. Um, He's even tried to match my riser color. Oops. You can see right here is my Tempest. You can see I'm going to use this. They come with two sided tape on it. I'm going to get some alcohol. I'm going to clean off my shelf and I'm going to pop it on and get it lined up and then I'll put the camera back on. Now, but one thing before I do that, I want to show I'm going to I'm using borders adjustable side plate on my Tempest, but Dan also makes a polymer side plate and if you take a good look at this I don't know if you can see it clearly here I'll hold it like this the way it's set up the way it's been pitched and angled you can move it up and down on your side plate to accommodate different diameter shafts and different setups which is really cool I have one of these on my Titan and I love it um, I also have one of these on my WF-19 and I really like it um, just a, a really nice feature. Again, on my Tempest, I'm shooting an aftermath, which is in between the, um, I guess, a, a, like a 516 shaft and a very skinny shaft. But for those that want to play with Dan's side plates that it comes in a kit like this, when you match these up and line them up, the way you move this in and out and up and down, all, um, you know, works with different diameter shafts, you can get a perfect fit. Again, I wanted to show this at a little bit of a better angle. Due to the radius being carved out in the back, the pitch on this side plate, you can see as these go together, it fits in the radius. And by moving this in and out and this up and down, you've got a lot of different flexibility in adjusting center shot or adjusting for a diameter shaft. Really, really cool idea. Really neat. Really cool setup. By the way, you can see my bullies are sitting here on the ground. Back up, Max. Got a tripod on, looking at us. They don't leave my side when I'm in the garage or anywhere I'm at, which I kind of like. Here you can see how the hump was further forward on the one that was made for the Titan. 
And now the hump has been moved back a little bit. Hope that's coming out. I'm gonna string this quick. So when I set my arrow on, I can get an idea. Watch your face, baby girl. The super recurve string, so easy. Uh, it's, I don't know how people say that they don't. Okay, we're strung up. I'm gonna take this and just put a little bit of heat from my, you know, uh, a little a blow dryer or a little heat gun. I mean, just a wick of it, just to get the adhesive really sticky. I'm gonna pop it on and we'll see how it lines up. Again, just a second from the big Baker stoves. Heat, I like to get the tape just a little bit Get nice and tacky and warm. I'm gonna pop off the bow quiver to do this. I always hang my tab on my quiver on any hunting bow I have, that way it's always together. One thing about quickie quivers, they sure do come off quick. Okay, maybe you can see a little bit better. I'm just gonna, I haven't removed the backing yet, I'm just gonna try to get it on here and just get an idea where it's going to lie. And you can see slightly pitched so I can bring it in and out also which is very cool. Now if I was using Dan's fixed adjustable side plate I would slide it up and down to help adjust center shot. But right about there Right about there, looks good to me. As you can see, it's got enough radius, of course, to, to shoot well off of, but it's also got a little bit of a pitch on the back side, which means the arrow is not, I'm gonna hold the plate on there, it's not keen to, oh, I just banged it, but it's not keen to slide off this way even when you start tilting the bow, which is a, a very nice little feature. So now I know about where I want it. I'm gonna peel the backing off of this. And I take my bow. All right, here we go. We know the predetermined spot from before when we didn't have the backing on. I laid it in. That looks pretty much where it was. I don't know if you can see it. Just dropped it on there. I'm trying to eyeball it up to where it was. Hold on. Maybe a tad back a little bit. That looks very good. Looks straight. Bam, now all we're gonna do is just push. So what you've got now is a radius shelf plate. Again, I'm incorporating it with Borders Adjustable one. They've got the same type of soft Velcro. Take an arrow. And bingo. Very nice indeed. Good job, Dan. Very cool. Now again, I'm gonna check it when I shoot it with my bear shaft to make sure that I'm, you know, how I'm, if I'm gonna be tail high or not, because this seems to be, it was a different radius than the other one. Not only is the shelf plate radius this way, it's also radius this way, which helps with the arrow sets on there. That even when I take the arrow past that, it still stays on the shelf, which is pretty cool. Very nice setup, very cool. Okay, we've got Dan Decker's 
custom shelf plate on the bow. Very clean looking. Really does a, a nice job. Um, just looks very finished. Uh, I'm gonna pop my quiver on my bow. I, anytime I'm gonna do any tuning, and what I'm gonna do is throw a bear shaft out of here because the last shelf plate had a slightly different radius. I wanna make sure my bear shafts are still working. Um, I found that a quiver does affect the tune of a bow. And if you're gonna shoot your bow with your quiver on it, which I do all the time, tune with your quiver on. So we're gonna pop a flat shaft out first. You can see how very clean of an install and how that looks. Again, not only are these radius this way, they're also slight, I guess, cambered this way or a slight little angle that allows the bow to even tilt past itself a little bit without the arrow falling off the shelf, which is just a, a very nice function. Okay, let's throw a bear shaft out there. Now I'm always trying to get, when I tune, I tune to them just slightly weak. I've found when I add feathers, that that's how I get my best broadhead flight. Oof, I just hit arrows, that's not good, but here. Let's zoom in and see where we're at. Give me a second. So I'm gonna walk down there and take a look at what we got up close. Come on, Max. Come on, buddy. Okay. Um, this is the bear shaft. Here's the flat shaft. I'm a little off in the spot, but I'd say that's um, close enough. I'm getting good flight still. It didn't alter it too much. Um, very good. Okay, I just came in from outside where I had a chance to stretch out my bear shafts and see how they were flying. When I was inside, I was getting a slightly knock high. Now, most people would think I would bring my knock point down to get rid of that. From the look of it, I could tell I had to go the opposite way. I had to bring my string knock up. I was getting a false reading. So I've done that and we're getting a little bit of better arrow flight. Well, a lot better. It's actually throwing some, some nice bullets outside. Now, a um, foam block is not your best medium to bear shaft into. Um, a layered target is a much better medium to shoot in. But let's fire a couple quick arrows. Again, I'm looking for slightly weak and I don't mind a little tail high. Here's a flat shaft. Here's the bear shaft. This bow is a joy to shoot. It is 43 pounds and it's just um, really effort, effortless. Okay. Let me walk down there real quick. Right here's our shafts. I'm not too tail high that it's a bother. Um, we made contact, so again, it's not the best reading, but um, it's a really nice setup. If you guys are looking for shelf plates or side plates done in polymer that are pretty much specifically made for the risers you're using, give Dan Decker a call. He does a great job, um, super clean. It's definitely the way to go. It, really beats the hell out of furniture pads. Um, I do believe they're IBO legal. I'm not sure. Um, the guys on the forum will tell you that. But again, just a super clean, super nice thing. If you've got a Tempest riser, a Titan riser, anything that needs um, a shelf plate added to it, 
This is definitely the ticket. A lot better than you know gluing chunks of wood and everything else to your bow. Um, these come off easy. They stay on once they're put on, and it just it gives a finished nice look. Um, again, Dan Decker, Triple D. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it.